So what up, what up world, this your homeboy Wordplay TJ and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, we are talking to Big Moochie, the international yeah. king of line dancing. Is here, right here, uh, in my in my my office, <laughs> <laughs> yes, broadcasting sir. live all the way from Cleveland. I'm glad to have you, bro. Um, it's been a few weeks we've been trying to get this organized. It's been kind of all over the place. I fumbled mm -hmm. the ball a little bit, but uh, now we're here, and that's all that matters. So um, that's right. Introduce. Introduce yourself to the people. Well, how y'all doing? I go by the name of Big Moochie. You know, since some people say a Big Moochie, baby. You know, the international king of line dance music straight out of Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm here rocking up with my man Wordplay. What's going on? Uh, as a little bit of a, a background, right? Like, what got you started in music in general? Um, I think the people should know what your passion is. Okay, well, what it was is that, uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, I was always a dancer. I always wanted to dance. And, you know, after graduating high school, I went to the Marine Corps. Yeah. Where I still was dancing and I noticed, you know, by traveling all over the world, different countries, you know, everybody loved dancing. You know what I'm saying? So when I got out the military, I came back home, linked up with my man Repo Rick. He more like got me into the music industry because he ran a record label. Yeah. And I was working like just a street team and like backup dancer for some of his acts. I came home back to Cleveland, Ohio, and you know, line dance, we was born into it out here in Cleveland. We was we was doing line dance ever since the 70s. Yeah. So when, so when I came back home, I was at the club just messing around. Me and my partner, Chelsea, we put a little dance together, and it blew up. And then next you know, people started saying, hey, man, can, can you make another line dance? Can you make another line dance? So I went to the studio, made a new song. That song blew up. And ever since then, 22 years later, I'm still doing it. Now, Cle you mentioned Cleveland being, like, a line dance capital like how do you think that came about because I, I think about it like places like detroit where where house music is big or new york city where it's kind of boom bap and, and, and that type of thing everybody has their own flavor so what where did that come from for cleveland well what it is is that you know urban line dance as we call it it originally started in columbus ohio okay you know what I'm saying? In, in the clubs where they took a dance, it was called the uh, the Madison. Yeah. Y'all know about the Madison. The Madison was a line that they did on hairspray and all that. Well, that was created in the urban clubs out in Columbus. Yeah. You know, back in the late 50s, like about 56, 57. Then it spread to Cleveland and it just really took off. But like where I'm from, we call it line dancing and it was real big. In Detroit, they call it hustle. But Detroit is more known for their ballroom dancing, which is more like, you know, like hand dancing, things like that. Yeah. But they call it ballroom. Chicago, they call line dancing slides. But uh, their real thing is, their culture is the Chicago stepping. So, you know, we all got all, it's all in the line dance family. You know what I'm saying? Different places called different things. Like if you go to Chicago, they'll say, oh, that's, that's Big Moochie. He make all the slide music. If you yeah. go to Detroit, they're like, oh, that's Big Moochie. He make all the hustle music, you know, like that. So really, well, I wouldn't say Cleveland was the capital, but it was like the Midwest. Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, yeah. and I'm going to add in Philly. I'm going to add in Philly, even though they're East Coast. But okay. we were like really the only ones that was real popular on line dancing in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And then it started spreading all over the globe. Okay, so it moved from different places, like it finally found its way to Cupid later on in the in the two thousands yeah. when he was in, when he was in Louisiana. It's funny because mm -hmm. when when I first met you, I talked. We had a phone conversation, and um, I told you like all my old co-workers were talking about how Cupid made the song and then kind of came out of Louisiana. But then you told me that. You were basically the originator of this thing. And I'm just like, man, that's crazy. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know that, you know? Yeah. Well, what it is, is I wouldn't say like as far as the originator, but what they'll call me is like what the older heads of the Latin dance world, they'll say more like I'm like the uh, the godson to the godfather line Gotcha. Dancer. Okay. That makes because sense. Because what it was is like 
it's a difference because what it is is like in the 60s and the 70s yeah you know what I'm saying? before the before the disco era they had the call outs you know walk to your right right two steps to your left you know after that when disco came all that disappeared it wasn't no more call out line dancers at all you know what I'm saying you had like uh let's take um the electric slide for instance it's the right. electric slide if you notice no there's no words out. right right no call outs from the booty call all the new line that came out you know they even consider like the macarena line dance you know yeah still no call outs so in 1997 when i came with 97 going in 98 i came out with the cleveland shuffle and i started doing the call outs again and that really burst it because it's like now everybody's starting to get right back on because some people can't line dance unless they hear the words right <laughs> you're right you know what I'm saying? some people can't remember that if there ain't no words they don't know so that's what they consider because yeah. that's the that's original line dance. when line dance first came out it was telling you how to do the dance right you know a four wall count you'll do right to your left go forward go back do something else and then you turn right. that's the basics of a line dance so like i said after the disco era the country westerners they more like took on the line dancing and you know we went into the r&b and rap and all that right. but i had to bring the line dance movement back i had to bring the culture back that's what's so up. that's why they some people say oh you're the new original i'm the godson to the godfather because i brought the call outs back and then after me then came the cha-cha slide one hop this time right <laughs> right foot let's thump that's call outs yeah then cupid came with the to your right to your right that's Add call a little outs. bit of jazz into it you know what i mean yeah he more like sung it but he still he did call outs right you know what right. i'm saying then you had like uh my man dj maestro who was out of detroit he had one called the turbo hustle mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying his is more fast but it's like right 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 left 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 right left kick kick you know what i'm saying it's real hot but so they consider me like the birth for the line dance movement again that's what's up and 22 years later i'm still going so speaking of line dances in general, so I have four parts to, you know, my whole YouTube channel and right. um, it's based off of marketing and in that in marketing, there's three P's. There's a product, there's your placement and there's your promotion. But on my channel, I have a fourth P and my P's are product placement, promotion and then publishing. I want to talk about the product in general, because in 98 is when the Cleveland Shuffle came about, right? Yeah. Before that, um, I had a song called Booty Bounce. Let me see that booty yeah. bounce. Let, yeah. Yeah. That was a line dance also, but it wasn't no call outs in that one. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what brought you to that point where it was like, this is it? You know what I mean? Because I read that, that you were in a group before. Um, mm -hmm. But. 71 North. What made you feel like, yo, this is what I need to be doing for the rest of my time and this is the product that i need to make for the people well what it is is that when i first made it i was just playing around gotcha. you know what i'm saying you know i'm fresh out the military i'm back home you know what i'm saying i was working at brinks you know the armored trucks you know yeah, yeah and like i said we was at the club and they were just playing the music i said man i could i could do this this ain't nothing no and i made the dance man. and it blew and like i said then somebody else came there you gotta make another one you gotta make another one so gotcha. I made another one. But at the time is I still wasn't thinking like, man, I'm going to get in the music business. It was just something I just did just so they could do it at the clubs. I didn't care about none of that. Then next thing you know, around, I would say about 99, 2000, people came up, man, I just bought your CD. From what? where? <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> what CD? <laughs> you know, what CD you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, it's a guy at Family Dollar had a whole box full of them. You know what I'm saying? They were selling, they called them the $5 hollers back then. Yeah, yeah. And then my boy like, man, they they bootlegging your music. I'm like, how? I don't even have no CD out. Come to find out was that when I made the songs, my, my partner had given them to some DJs at the radio station. Yeah. And they were playing them on the radio and people was recording it off the radio. Wow. So they were so making the, like the Cleveland Shuffle. Yeah, so the Cleveland Shuffle and my song, The Booty Bounce, was recorded off the radio and it was put out as a single, an A and B side, yeah. and the bootleggers out there selling it. That's crazy. Now, man, I ain't had no name because I wasn't no rapper. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, so they just called me the Booty Bounce Man. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Booty bounce, man. Cleveland shuffle booty bounce. So you then know, I'm like, oh, no. Nah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you know, like, no, um, when people get into the music business, people do it intentionally. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't come up on making music as an intent, right? Because before I was a, a visual artist and all that, those other things, and I was just drawing. But when I started to make mm-hmm. music, I felt something about it. Now, a lot of people go into the music business because they think they can make something of it. But I, I usually learned the, the people that are most successful when doing it are the ones mm-hmm. that are doing it without that intent. Is that how you felt about it? I mean, honestly, that's how I feel. Yeah. That's how I really feel because, like, I be listening to, like, a lot of rappers and, and things like that that, uh, you know, when they be talking about how they get mad and they got played and they wanted to pull a gun out and all that. Man, I've been doing this since I was a little kid. This has always been my dream. I'm like, you've never been mine. So, you know, when people sit there and say, how did you feel when this happened? I really don't have the same feeling as a person who was coming up wanting this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more like I was just thrown in it. And I was just saying, hey. But then when I found out that people was making money off of me, I said, well, I need to go ahead and start taking this serious. Right. And that's when I started getting, uh, you know, starting to get the the the, the copyrights and, you know, the, the ass cap and BMI. Right. But like I say, out right. here in Cleveland, we don't have really no other big artists. It's not real a lot of sign artists where we can talk to for information or help. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, man, am I doing this right? What I need to do to get this? You know, we don't have that. Right. So everything we're doing is like just straight out the mud. We're just learning what we're hearing on TV or what we're reading and things yeah. like that. And um, I don't know why I want to fast forward it, but as far as like the publishing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know nothing about publishing. Right. All I knew was you make a record, you get a copy written. You sign up for ASCAP Kappa BMI, mm-hmm. and you just promote, 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 and make sure you got enough copies to have in the stores and the sale. That's it. Right. I ain't know nothing about no publishing and mechanical royalties. I ain't know nothing about none of that. Okay. Um, with that in mind, uh, thinking about all those things, right? Um, when people come to my channel, they're in the mindset that you know they need to be there i i feel like they're they're a step ahead of everybody else and honestly because they're Mm -hmm. actually searching for what all this information is but when i when they come to my channel a lot of people i think before that didn't feel like they needed it um do you think they'd be better off if they didn't worry about it or you know what i mean should they continue please? <laughs> no i mean because you know there's always things we need to learn yeah you know what i'm saying we need to notice if you really want to be in this business you need to know the business right you know what i'm saying and and you know like i said here we don't have people to teach us the business so majority of people what they do is they go to youtube and google and look up and then you know they do the, you know like like my dad said you got to do your homework yeah. if you really want you got to do yeah. your homework don't don't be scared to ask questions reach out you know what i'm saying if they help you out that's fine you know what i'm saying when things get good return the favor right right so i, I think it's, it's, it's good okay um well you talked about radio for a second and you talked about people bootlegging well sort of yeah basically bootlegging your your work and uh yeah. selling it how did you feel when things went digital? Like, did that affect your business in a negative way? Or did it help you? Actually, it helped. Gotcha. The digital world more like helped me as far as sales. Because if my music was spreaded all around and I didn't know. Yeah. All I just knew was Cleveland. You know, and then like once YouTube really became popular. And things like that. I'm starting to see people doing my dances over in Italy, over in China, Korea. I would have never knew. Right. And I'm like, well, how's they getting my music? You know what I'm saying? And now I notice that it's from the digitals. Right. Right. So that digital really it, it, it helps. Um. 
how can I explain it? Uh, I would say it helps a lot of people, but like as far as record labels, nah. I was I was just about to get there. It's like, how do you feel about <laughs> being independent in, in, in that in that light? Because you know, I personally don't yeah. agree with being signed when, especially when I see people like you. You know, what mm-hmm. I, mean? I was just like, oh, that's so possible. Like that, that that's just the arms reach away, right? And I can get on the phone and be like, you know, whoop do like, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, what, <laughs> right. what what's your what's your really feel your real feelings about record labels? Well, to me, I I think it's 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 both good and bad depending on what you want to do. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna take my for instance. With me, I'm independent. I've been independent, like you say, over 21 years. But I know if I had a major label behind me, I'd probably be at a whole different level than what I am because of the music that I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Like, if you're a rapper, you don't really need a label. You know what I'm saying? The label is your digital platform. Right. You know what I'm saying? But as far as me, I do line dance music. My... My core fan base is older, you know, the older people. I would say the core fan base for a real line dance is maybe 45 and up. That's they're not crazy. really too computer, they're not really too computer swabby. They're not going to go online trying to download your music because they don't think they're going to get a virus on their computers. So, in that sense, you know, I'm still selling CDs. Right. You know, when I do shows, I sell out because I have a CD slash step by step DVD to come with it because with line dancing, you got to have visual to go with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's different than rap. You know, people just love your rapping. You know, you, you getting twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a show because, you know, everybody just love it. That's what the record label's getting mad about. But the thing about me as far as the reason why I wanted to be on a label, I said, I don't care if it's a single deal. Because if for some reason, when you're independent, when somebody hear that label name behind you, like say if it said wordplay, a uh, rock nation wordplay right, sony right, right, wordplay right. this this yeah guess what when it's time for you to do a show right now you might say well i'm charging 2500 so you, you had a promoter stamp. so you had a promoter that day and he said yo wordplay man how much you charge for a show uh man g- give me three thousand three thousand then you act like you signed to somebody or something man you just a you know what i'm saying you just on the internet, da, 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 da. you know, yeah. I give you fifteen hundred. You be like, damn. All right, we'll get. Let me get it to. Me. But if you came with wordplay, Rock Nation, yo, how much charge? Five thousand. Oh, I got you, man. Oh, you, you need a plane? Or oh, we gonna have a limo pick you up from the? You see what I'm saying? Your price that went up just because it's a different. label. Yeah, it's a, because it's a label name behind you. The price has just jumped up. Yeah, it's like cats right now. You know, not really trying to tell nobody else's business in the industry, but it's a real hot artist banging right now he just came out like last year but he really got popping this year he was only charging like 7500 mm-hmm. because we was gonna book him for this uh event on memorial day weekend just earlier this year he got signed yeah now he had twenty two thousand. Wow. that's a big jump that's a huge jump from seven to twenty two <laughs> from seven to twenty two yeah that's that's a big jump that's more than double that's three times at that point, 300%. Right. But see, what it is is that the difference is when we independent, we one machine. Yeah. The labels, they get, say, 200 people working for them. So you got 200 machines, 200 people working your project to you. So, like, when I come out with my new record, you know what I'm saying? I put it out. You know what I'm saying? I got to work triple hard to try to get it out all over but if you was with a label as soon as it come out it's everywhere at one time okay you know what i'm saying so it's a it's a good and a bad like with my biker shuffle the song i got called the biker shuffle yeah it probably be old as dirt now if i was on a label it's 10 years in now 10 years yeah. and it's still selling yeah. people still be hitting up on on twitter and on uh instagram saying oh man i just learned the biker shuffle i just you just learned it. Yeah, man. Yeah. They just starting to play it out here yeah, in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I said, hold on. 
no, no, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Because that's yeah. where I'll be at tomorrow. I said, wait a minute. They say they just start playing that like two years ago. I said, that's only been out for eight for ten years. Well, they really just start playing in the clubs and on the radio out here two years ago. So that's that's one of the bonuses. They let you eat for a long time, wordplay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna do a video about that. As a matter of fact, I was planning one to do like five reasons was well, five or six reasons why streaming is very beneficial for you, and that's one of those reasons. Um mm -hmm. So thinking about all of that and, and thinking about record labels and you said that in a record label, they got 200 people behind you. Did you ever feel like it was time to start building a team or do you have a team assembled around you to, to kind of mimic what the record labels are doing for you? Well, I want to answer that truthfully. Once again, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And I do line dance music. Yeah. I do everything everything on my own because of the fact that nobody knows the business, one. Mm -hmm. Number two, nobody knows how to work a line dance song. No. Except me. So it'd be like if I wouldn't hire people, then they'd be like, man, you boss, you might well just do it yourself because I'm going to be over everybody's shoulder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Compared to if I was in other cities that the music is real popping where you're like, oh, my cousin used to work for, for, for Arista, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they, they still got some connects and this and that. Here, we don't have none of that. Yeah. So You're the me, I'm just build, Yeah, so I just build everything on my own and I just keep my ears open and just get good friendships and relations with people like you, for instance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some things I might not know or somebody else might hit me up and be like, hey, Moosh, man, what is it? I say, you know what? I don't know that, but let me make a phone call and I'll try to get the answer for you. Yeah. For sure. You know, so that's that's my thing. And that's why, you know, I just still independent, just still doing it on my own, everything on my own. Yeah. So the third P that I that I focus on is promotion. And so you mentioned that you kind of do it on your own and, and, and don't have that that team, per se, because they're not the experts at promoting what you do. Like, how mm -hmm. is it best to even promote a lion dance? Like, what's the first step in, in that process? Okay, the first step is the dance, really. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But you have to really, it's the music. It can go hand in hand. Normally, it's the music first. Yeah. Then the dance. Now, the thing about line dance, like, I can send you one of my new songs. It can have a hot beat. It's banging. The first thing you're going to say is, how the dance go? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I say, you say move to your right and, and turn, but so with mine is all visual. Gotcha. You have to put out the step by step instructional first. And then people will sit there and they're like, oh, I like that song. And then some people like to dance. Some other people say, oh, that dance cute. Oh, it go good with that music. Because believe it or not, some people took my dance and put it to other people's music. Right. Because they liked the song, like uh, my, my line dance called The Booty Bounce. Mm -hmm. they took the booty this was back in um i'm gonna go with probably like around 2000 somewhere in the 2000s but they took my line dance and they put it to kaya's k wayne with it gotcha so if y'all know who kaya is y'all go online type in k wayne with it when y'all see that line dance that's my my choreography yeah and it blew it up it blew it you know what I'm saying? just like the wobble the mm -hmm. wobble is actually another line dance that somebody took and just put it to the song because it fits that song. Gotcha. Gotcha. And whoever made the song, it blows that artist up. So that's why I try to tell a lot of people, I say, with us, with our with our groove, our line dancing, we can stretch a record out. We can get yeah. that longevity record. Yeah. But you can copyright a routine. You can't copyright um just one step. You know what I mean? Right. Just you can't copyright right steps. Right. That's crazy. Um, and that's 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 the worst thing for us because we cannot really copyright our choreography as far as the line dance. They won't let us do it. They won't let you copyright the whole thing. Nope. That's crazy because they uh, is it like they trying to a they, step? They tr trying to change it up, but yeah, yeah, they won't let you do it because if you go two to the right, you can't copy that. Gotcha. Okay. Because the steps are so 
I guess basic for lack of a better term. Like right. they don't want to copyright really to simple man. steps. Right. Man, you you stole my kicks. I do the kick. The kick. You know right. what I'm saying? People be exactly. all Yeah. You're like, man, you don't these kicks. A problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so that's 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 that right there is, is really bad. But uh for for promoting a line dance record is have a good dance that everybody can do. Mm-hmm. To a good song, yeah. As far as a, well, uh, like it go both ways because if I'm a, like me with a, I'm an artist. I'm a line dance artist, so I make my dances and my music. So I got to make sure my music is hot, and my dance is nice to go with that song. But you have other people who are just choreographers, and they just make dances up to everybody else's music. Right, right. And the way to promote it is, they just go online, and they just type in. The Janet Jackson line dance, the Stevie Wonder slide. You know, people are like, oh, I like that. The next thing you know, you got wedding receptions and cookouts and people doing your dance. Yeah. So that's our main thing as far as promotion. Okay. It's, it's um, got to be visual. It's like really everything turned into a visual world now anyway. Everybody wants to see yeah, what you look like. Everything is visual. If, if people don't see it on social right now, then it might as mm-hmm. well not even exist. You know? Right. Um. Thinking about more promotion, uh, I remember a conversation we had a while back and you were talking about like making a song for people locally, you know what I mean? And focusing Mm -hmm. on that. And we were talking about line dancing, but my thought went to is like more so how can I apply line dancing promotion right so does some some of the same elements that work for line dancing and apply mm-hmm. it to a traditional song to see if it'll work you know what i mean well what you have to do is with your regular song you have to get somebody to choreograph a dance to go to that song and just film the video and just put it out there so you might have a hardcore gangster rap fences there's a lot of songs out here that don't post have no line dance to them. Right. That Lil Wayne, song. Drake, yeah, all of them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to think about no line dance, but the choreographers in the line dance community, they'll put a dance to it. Next thing you know, they'll videotape themselves doing it, put it on YouTube. That's the promotion part. And then that's how I just spread. Then, you know, somebody else like it. Next thing you know, they just took it off of YouTube. They put it on their Instagram. And then somebody right. took off an Instagram, put it on Facebook, and they just sharing it. So now you got the Tatiana line dance. Right. And it don't matter what song it is. It really doesn't. Like, people right. can and the thing, make a routine to whatever it is. Yeah, to whatever. And the thing is, is like with Blueface and them, he wouldn't even know about it. Right. And then next thing you know, he getting booked for a show at a line dance party. And he's talking about, y'all want to do Tatiana. He's seeing all the, you know what I'm saying? And, and he don't even know it's a line dance. Yeah. As soon as he performed the song, people started line dancing. He's standing there like, what is this? And that's how it is. All you got to do is just put a dance behind your record. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure it's something that everybody can do. You know what I'm saying? You could go get the, the kids in your neighborhood. If you got some cousins or some young cats in your neighborhood that you're real friends with, like, hey, check this out. I want y'all to do this dance real quick. I'm going to videotape y'all with my music in the background. And then just put it up on Instagram. All the social media is just blasted. That's how a lot like, of people the new do it word, now. The, the, the new wordplay slide. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Next thing you know, somebody be like, oh, they bored. They only, I don't like, oh, I'm going to do the wordplay slide. I like that dance right there. Right. And next thing you know, now your name blowing up big and they booking you to do concerts for line dancing. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't even know how to do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> but you go to a club and everybody in the club know your dance. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I never thought about it that yeah. way, but that's that's it's brilliant and it's pretty relevant to what's going on right now anyway. Like people are mm-hmm. doing these dances and then their songs are blowing up or they're making a meme or some some other thing that right. that, that goes viral. Mm-hmm. Um because like I tell people always uh-huh. and I can tell all your viewers, one thing in this planet that would never play out is dancing. Mm-hmm. People always going to dance forever. Right. So you make music that people can dance to. It goes a further. It goes further than just something to make people think about. Right. Yeah. I, I put it up on my board yesterday. I was like, people don't mi- listen to music 
people don't listen to music to learn about you. They listen to music mm-hmm. to learn about themselves. That's right. Yeah. That's deep. And I, 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 after I thought about that, I was like, man, dog, how long have I been making music and it hasn't been about them? You know what I mean? <laughs> Some songs make it, right? Some songs become mm-hmm. about them. But um, I didn't right. realize how important that was to make songs for other people that way. Yeah. Um, I say, you really, you do both, you know? Yeah, exactly. You, you, you do what you regularly do, and then sometimes you just think out the box and say, you know what? Let me make two records talking about something else. Mm-hmm. And it's always be them the ones that blow up, the ones that you don't really think about be the, the hottest songs that everybody want to hear. I agree. Yeah. There's a and lot, there's a of, lot songs of artists that feel like that, you know? Yeah. There's a few of my songs that are like starting to bubble up, and I was like, why these? You know what I mean? I was like, mm-hmm. what happened? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, right. To- totally blows my whole marketing strategy or plan out of the water. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I can't, I can't predict this shit anymore. Like, let me go ahead and just throw it right. out. Um, so the last but I'm part also I want to get another thing that, that, yeah. Oh, I was going to say one thing that a lot of artists mess up at though. Mm-hmm. It's like what you said, some of your older songs start picking up, blowing up. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, why are they doing this? You know what I'm saying? A lot of artists, what they'll do is, they're like, man, I don't like that record, and they won't do nothing with it. Right. The smart artists is you take them songs that they like. Them the ones you don't, don't push the ones you like, push what everybody else like. Exactly. And now they help video. you out. So like them songs that you're saying, they pick it up, you're like, you know what? Let me go ahead and pull that back. Let me go ahead and remaster it real quick and so I'm going to add some 808s in it because there were not no 808s then. And mm-hmm. let me put this back out. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Think of yourself last. Think of your consumers first. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I feel like that's the key to promotion in general. No yeah. matter what you're promoting. Think of your consumers first and, and yourself last. And yourself last, right. So... I'm going to get to the last section, which is publishing. And I want to know, how did you feel when you saw your first royalty check for for this? And was it like, was it enough to go do something special with? Or, you know, Mm -hmm. was it just kind of stacking bread type of money? Okay, well, and it's funny you said that because I was just talking to a a co-worker about it. Uh, When I first started getting the royalty checks in, it was like really just small change. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, they started coming in around 2014. Yeah. 2014, they started coming. Which you is know, a long $25 time. here, yeah. $40 here, $60 here, $100 here, $100 here, $100 here. But every year, it started getting bigger and mm-hmm. bigger. You know what I'm saying? So at the beginning, it was just a little chump change, you know, gas money or something like that. Right. Now we got to the point where it's like, I can live off of this. Yeah. I could quit my job if I wanted to because every 10th of the month, you know, not to you know, well, mine's every 10th. Yeah, yeah. But every 10th of the month, I'm getting something that's more than somebody's average by weekly paycheck right right and so i talk about that on my so, channel that what you're doing is setting yourself up for the future right if you're if you yes. create the system that i talk about on my channel it'll put you in a place where all you got to do is feed new music to people promote it right right and then keep making mm-hmm. new stuff all you got to do is keep making you don't even have to make an album yep. You can make new singles. You can right, just, you just drop every singles. three months. Like, just keep mm-hmm. putting out stuff. And in my my scenario, tell, you're getting money forever, not just that one time check. Right. Right. And then, believe it or not, see, I, I stopped. I'm really starting to change from doing an album mm-hmm. to really just pushing out singles because yeah. of the fact that when we was doing albums before. They was going to the stores. You know, you get the CD cases and all that. You know, the whole 15. Right. You had to pay that fifteen ninety nine at first. Right. Then, you know, as years changed, it went down to nine ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? You had to pay that. But now, 
with this digital come in that's what i'm saying with the labels i know they really wasn't feeling the digital all like that with the first drop mm -hmm. because now when you put your album out they got 15 tracks people could buy them individually as singles exactly exactly and ain't nobody so really ain't concerned no more. about the whole album in in most cases like I don't listen to the whole right. album. People don't I worry about that no more. I find my favorite song and then rock with it. Right. You might pick two out that whole track of 15 or 10. Most people I tell now don't even make no 15 track album no more. Right. You know, I tell people now, what, what, this is my opinion, do a maxi single, just four songs. Mm -hmm. Let them ride till they ride out. Six months later, the other four that you is going to have on your 10 track album, then put them out. Right, right. Instead of dropping, because honestly, bro, when I came out, when I dropped the uh, Shuffle Step Slide album, yeah, that had the, my hit song, The Biker Shuffle, on it. It was '09, and I had, I believe, it was eight tracks, but I had an intro and an outro, which made it ten, which made it an LP. And uh, when I put it out. The only song people was getting was the biker shuffle. Yeah. So now I got seven more songs on it just sitting. You know, I'm trying to promote them and push them a little bit here and there, but people wanted that biker shuffle. Right. So I just stayed focused on. I said, with well, biker shuffle, what y'all want? I'm gonna go ahead and keep feeding it to y'all. But then you'll be thinking four, five, six years later, you're gonna be like, well, that was a waste of the other seven records. Yeah. Did you feel like you know what I'm saying? Did so, you feel like? that or did you feel like uh part of your creativity was being stifled by not being having those other songs heard that's how i felt at the beginning but then by me doing line dance music i'm like well people don't want to sit there and be doing no 10 song line dances right <laughs> you know you go to a club they'll play maybe about two or three line dances and that's it right you know what i'm saying but i'm to the point now i'm happy because at least when I go out, I got like three of my songs being played. Right, right. You know, you'll hear the biker shuffle. Then you might hear the Cupid shuffle with Cupid. You might hear the cha-cha slide. Then you might hear my song Booty Bounce and the Cleveland Shuffle. Yeah. I'm like, man, I got three. Play back to back. You know, I'm just walking <laughs> around my chest. Up, like, yeah. I said, let got me keep feeding. I said, I want to get to a point where, where yeah. everybody, where it's just Moochie game. They're going to be like, man, this must be Moochie's hour or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but um, all I did was... Uh, I just recycled them. You know what I'm saying? When I came out with my next project, I just took them, the last seven, that everybody wasn't really familiar with, and I'm just start putting them out. And now they blowing up now. People are like, oh, I know about your birthday slide. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. I'm like, man, that was all back in the 90s. Oh, 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 nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, so, yes. People feel some type of way about streaming, but my thought is that it lasts forever. Right. Yes. And people listen to it over and over and over and again. Oh, right. So you're so like unlike buying a CD. Right. Mm -hmm. Ludacris. When I first listened to Ludacris's album, Word of Mouth, I played that on repeat. But he didn't right. get paid a second time. Mm -hmm. yep. He got paid, paid that paid one time, time for that one listen, for that one spin. Mm -hmm. But I, I played that album until I couldn't play it no more. Right. And now you got people now, like you said, with the digital. And, and um, I don't know if this is what you want to bring this up or not, but I'll bring it up is that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people always ask me, what's the best digital platform to really focus their music on? Yeah, yeah. Like between Spotify, Amazon, Tidal, you know, all them. And me personally, I say all of them. Mm -hmm. Because you never know what people listen to. Yeah. Because I have a lot of people that just listen to Pandora. Right, right. You know, they don't even do SoundCloud and Spotify. I'm on Pandora. But then you got people who do Spotify a lot. And what I've been noticing a lot when I be going places like uh if I'm like at festivals or cookouts, people go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. They use YouTube as they streamer. That's the first you know, they can just they pipe the song right on in right. and play it. Matter of fact, if you look at some of the videos. With people doing my song, the the uh, the biker shuffle and the Cleveland shuffle, mm -hmm. you will see in the background they got my video up on TV, yeah, off of YouTube, and they playing it off of YouTube. So I'm like, oh, they dancing to me off of YouTube. Okay, I right. got I got to stay focused. I got to concentrate 
And that's better than a DJ playing it because a DJ yeah. you can't track. Right? Uh huh. Like yeah. But at YouTube, at least you got content ID. Yeah. So that's a good thing. So it, so, it really helps. It helps us out a lot as independent artists. Okay. I want to wrap this up, and um, I want to wrap this by, I, I, I think, talking about what do you think for a, a new up and coming artist, uh, no matter what the genre is, whatever they make, mm-hmm. what do you think is the best move for them to make when they first come out? They got, uh, say, they got a record, and they're ready to go. What's step mm-hmm. number two? Step number two is to get all your, uh, all your really is all your business together. Like as far as your copyright, your uh, your admin publisher, definitely mm-hmm. that. Your pub, your publishing, and um, really just laying down all the the screen things you have, and learning how to promote on social media. Yeah. Because it's really it's really a tactic to that, right? It is. Once you know how to do do that, you know. Once you learn how to do that, that because some people they just I know those people come out with a song, you know, they're distributed through TuneCore, CD Baby, DistroKid, all them good ones, and that's it. That's it. Back and that's it. Hey, come check me out on 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 uh, on, on Tune or not not TuneCore, but like something like on Spotify, on yeah. Title. How many people are that's doing it. that's that? That's their whole plan. Everybody. That's their whole plan. And then they won't like uh I have a few few hours I'll be trying to get on, you know what I'm saying? They believe me like I'm I'm old school, man. You the grandfather, but I'll be telling them like, you say you got a new record out. I just went on your page. I don't see nothing about your song. Oh, I posted on there last month. Well, that's it. Right. You post man, you it one post time. every week. Yep. Yeah, one time and they think that's it. You gotta make so, like thirty different once videos. Learn, for that you know, song. Really yeah but i really think that that uh and i learned it from you the 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 admin publishing yeah yeah it's a must it's a must if you if you're really into your music business and you want that and you want to make sure you got everything coming to you you know what i'm saying you do your 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 ass copy your bmi you know what i'm saying get your admin publishing going on and make sure all your paperwork is right on your stream sites yeah because a lot of people miss out on a lot of money because they don't have one or the other like a lot of people don't know about the publishing administrator right you get paid more so than you one know time. you might be real big over in the uk mm-hmm. right you might be big in the uk and don't even know it right you know You're what i'm right. saying you sign up for a pub ad after that they're like oh man you missed out on like seven hundred thousand dollars right and but you uh, can't go get go check back. for 200 because we only track yeah you can't get it back you know what I'm saying? i want to cry when i talk to you i'm like oh man <laughs> boy, <my finish."> but <laughs> yo I felt Guess the what? same way when I, <laughs> I start, when I hey. had my my song on MTV and they were playing it and they were repeating it too, but mm-hmm. at the time like I I didn't have my publishing situation so I didn't know that I needed to send out a sheet for that. But right, I would have. Thing. We we didn't know. Man, it's mm-hmm. crazy. And that's why I'm so thankful and blessed that I met you, that I ran across your channel. You know what I'm saying? And because you drop it real. Dang. And I just spread it to everybody that I know. Everybody to call me on some music things or you're trying to get into it, boom, boom. I'm like, look, this your homework assignment right now. Yeah. Go to Wordplay, give them your link. And I say, go all the way at the bottom and watch every video all the way up to the top. Say, by the end, you'll be ready for the game. And that's my real opinion right there on that. Man, I appreciate that. I've learned a lot from you as well, and that's that's kind of why I wanted to have this conversation in the first place, because I think it's good to pick other people's brains and not everybody has to do everything by themselves. Mm-hmm. And so that's a big deal for me. Um, right. And I, I want to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to, to sit with me and talk and give some content to the to the audience. But um, I want to mm-hmm. make sure before you leave that you tell everybody where to go get your latest stuff. What's what's brand new for you? What do you want? What what do you want them to to go listen to? And how can mm-hmm. they find you out there? 
Okay, well, the new album out now is called The Line Dance Movement 2. It's on all your streaming digital platforms. Um, the main songs that I would like y'all to check out is, of course, the classic The Biker Shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, on the new album, you got The Rebirth of the Shuffle, Mickey James, really all of them, you know, and I have, uh, you know, videos with instructionals on how to do the dance step by step. You know, since real hot, you could do it for your birthday parties, your family reunions, your cookouts. You know, it's the summertime now, festivals, everything. So, and it's good for uh, a lot of people use line dancing now for fitness. Yeah. You know, fitness is a real big thing, even mm -hmm. though I can't lose a pound off of it and I do it every day. <laughs> but yeah, but, um, and y'all can also reach out to me on all networks, social media networks at Big Moochie, that's B I G M U C C I at gmail.com. I do follow back and I do reply when people leave me comments. I'm a, I'm a people's person, so that's another okay. thing too. Being a people's person, you know what I'm saying. People that. more relate to people that they can feel like they can reach out to and talk to. Yeah, and that's me. I'm that man for you. Well, like I said before, I appreciate it. And um, I appreciate everybody that's uh, watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. And until next time, it's your homeboy work.